On this episode of the Everett Lee Show, my guest, independent wrestler, just sang, and it happens right now. The Everett Lee Show Podcast, a shot of entertainment. Just saying. Hey, Hey, how's it going, man? How's it feeling? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. How you doing on this fine Tuesday night? Oh, man, to tell you the truth, I'm a little bit beat up. I mean, this weekend was in the gym hard, was training hard. Other than that, though, I'm good. I'm good. That's that's good. That's that's really good. We were chatting here right before I hit the record button, and we're sitting there talking, talking about matches years on YouTube and we were talking about that match with you had on Gen Pro Wrestling, Daniel with Daniel Alexander. Yeah, yes, with Daniel Alexander. Yeah, yeah, that's my bro. Um, yeah, yeah, no, we uh we went to war a little bit. Um, and it is it's kind of crazy because like both of us were just getting over being sick. Um, when that match came up, so like we we were still we were still fighting in there. Like it was it was fun though. It was fun. That's 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 amazing that getting over being sick and you guys still went out there and you still performed in front of a crowd. That's that's amazing. That shows shows the heart and dedication that you have for this business. Yeah, no, uh, we we love this, man. And and both of us are, are are big on, you know, just fans putting on something for them that's memorable and that they can enjoy. Like, that's that's kind of what we want to do. I love it. I love it. I loved everything about that match, man. Just the pace of it and the spots and stuff. You're trying to get up on him, one up on him. He's trying to get one up on you and just the action coming into going into the corner, out of the corner and just the spots there and the the finish. I didn't expect that to happen, but that pretty much happened there with that finish there. I was like, oh, wow. I was like, it's I, mean, over? <laughs> I was wanting more. Seriously, <laughs> more out I of mean, that match. So- so anybody who checks that match out, if y'all want to see the part two of it, see how we ended the saga, um, you can go to wrestling. We are one wrestling vibes on YouTube. The match is on there. Um, check out Daniel Alexander's page. He has the match up on there too. Nice. Nice. I, I'm, I'm just curious. How, how long have you been in the business? How, how long you've been, you've been wrestling? How long you've been doing this? So, I've been wrestling for four years. I've been professionally uh, professionally out on the indies for three. Um, so I started out in the yards. Um, and, and I mean, it's kind of crazy because I started out in the yards kind of late. I'm 43 now. I, I started when I was 39. Um, was in the yards and I felt like I was pretty good. So I, I wanted to see how far I could go with it. You know, like it, like wrestling has always been something that I was a fan of. Like, you know, I grew up on wrestling. I grew up with the likes of like Randy Macho Man, Hogan, uh, Brutus, the Barber, Beefcake, Bret Hart, like, like those guys and so forth and so on. Um, so, you know, I got the chance to do it and I was like, yeah. And here we are four years later, you know, <laughs> and the, I don't know. I, I never thought I, I'd be as far as I am with wrestling. Um, but I, I just keep grinding just to see how much further I can go. That's, that's amazing. You're talking about, you're talking about people I grew up with too, as well. Watching Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Brutish Beef Cake and stuff. Just great, great, um, people in the business just to lay the foundation for what we have today in wrestling there because i was talking about wrestlemania wrestlemania 3 the intercontinental championship match with savage and steamboat that is like my favorite match there i have to say what's the number two now that comes close to it was this past weekend's wrestlemania that triple threat with gunther sheamus and drew mcintyre Bro, yeah. <laughs> bro, you want to talk about a banger? Oh my man, them boys! <laughs> oh, they was hitting. 
Oh, they was hitting. I yeah. was sore watching it, bro. I was like, hey, oof. <laughs> I don't know if I could take too many of those. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> it just it is it, it was it was a great match there, and I, yeah. I grew up watching watching the people that you mentioned there and stuff. When I mean, you said thirty nine. You got into it doing thirty nine when you were thirty nine. Kind of like Diamond Alice Page. I don't know if you've uh, you familiar with Diamond Alice Page. He got into it late and he yeah. had a hell of a career in uh, professional wrestling. And you pretty much. I don't know if uh, people's mentioned that to you before, or you're like you you're aware of that. So I mean, nobody has has ever like I know Diamond Dallas Page's story. I'll start there. I know his story, but nobody has ever come to me and and with that comparison or anything. Um, generally, uh, when people see me, they they think I'm like early thirties, late twenties. And they don't. And when they find out how old I am, they're like shocked. They're like, oh my god. <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah that's, no I don't, I don't i don't get it a lot yeah that's that is, that is cool that is, that is cool that you know you got it got into it uh you know you you went ahead and you're like i'm gonna do this um what um what was your first wrestling match that you went and seen was it an independent show was it a wwe show wcw show what what do you uh what was your first live wrestling event you went to the first live wrestling event i went to was a wwe show it was um i believe it was an extreme rules mm -hmm. it was here at the wells fargo center oh okay it was the first okay. one yeah 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 it was the first one. I did, bro, my memory is bad. I couldn't tell you what year, but it was like um it was like one of the the first ones that came through. Okay. Okay. Where whereabouts do you live there? You said Wells Fargo Center. That I that uh, sound really familiar. Philly. Philly. Okay. That's okay. When you said Wells Fargo, I'm like, you live somewhere close. I up up in the area up there somewhere, Philly. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a that's amazing, man. I mean, I, I'm sure you're excited next year for WrestleMania 40 coming to Philadelphia. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to be one long year of grinding because, yeah, I'm real excited about that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. This, I mean, this, uh, it's not the first time WrestleMania has been here, but um, I don't know. The, I, what I think they're going to do with the stories or what I would like to see with the stories and that I'm, I'm hoping they, they go with. I'm real excited for that for Mania plus the the opportunities. Um, they should be uh, pretty big, pretty huge. So I'm looking forward to those too. That's that's amazing. That that is it's it's going to be great. I mean, WrestleMania 14 came to Philadelphia. That was that was big. That was uh, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels in the main events. Austin yeah. wins WWE Championship. Um, yeah, Philly, Philly, Wells Fargo, they, they've had a lot of wrestling there and there's a lot of wrestling around the area there too. Yes, um, there is. you, you pretty much have grown up in Philly then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When did, uh, where, where did you go and get trained at? When did you like, what schools or who did you look up around the area there close to you that you wanted to go and, you know, you wanted to pursue this when you're like, so, yeah. So starting out, um, starting out when, when I was in the yard, um, like I got, there was a guy there named, uh, Ozzy. Um, he started training me. Um, he, he showed me some stuff, um, that, help me out in the yard but you know in order to go to the next level i needed actual training so um i was with this fed uh delta wrestling alliance and started training there and then um my brother daniel alexander um he showed he showed me this place um over in uh 
uh, Deptford, I think it is, uh, Skid Row uh, Wrestling Academy. Um, and that's where I go to train now. Um, been training there most of my professional career. Um, I might pick up seminars here and there from other people. Um, like I've done a seminar under preach preacher. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I train at currently. Okay. I've heard, I've heard us, I've heard of skid row. I've, I've heard of it before, man. I've heard it before on, on, I believe different podcasts, or I've heard it somewhere before someone yeah, that it's, it's pretty well known. Yeah, no, they, they, they teach you how to wrestle. They teach you how to be a pro. That's, 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 that's good. I do got to ask you this. How was it taking your first bump? <laughs> I always love asking. Um, man. So, <laughs> so like when before I took my first my my first actual bump in a match, you know, people you know was hyping it up and you know, are you gonna be sort of the day? And I took it and I was like, ah, that's not so bad. I kind of like. So all right, I'm I'm a little weird. I kind of liked it. <laughs> this is probably why. It's probably why I'm doing it. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was, I was like, yeah, yeah. That, that that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple, couple of years ago, when at at the end of the CFWU show, so a couple guys got back in the ring and they were just hitting the ropes just for just for fun there, and right. I got in the ring, and it was like the first time I actually got into a wrestling ring, and I was like, show me how to bump. They're like, you want to take a bump, Everett? I said, yeah, show me how to bump. And I got down, I squatted and went like, the, you know, and threw your hands back. The first time I did it, oh, it was wrong. <laughs> They're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, can't do it like that. So, because I didn't really tuck my chin. And then the second time, oh, when I, went, boom, I hit. I was like, whoa. I was like, that's what it feels like now. So I got more of an idea and I more I have more respect for people getting in a ring now because after I took my, I took a bump myself, I was like, I get it now. And I was like, I want to do that again. <laughs> so yeah, I did it yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and now, guy, now like don't don't get me wrong with what I said. Like, like it's jarring. Like don't 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 mistake me being like I like it and yet like it's jarring. Don't like, yeah, you feel it, but yeah, it feels good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was like the the guy who showed me how to, showed me how the bump. He he was like twenty year twenty year vet, and I was you know in the back cleaning up my production stuff. And he came up to me. He goes, "Hey," he says, "I've shown people like eighteen younger than you, you know, to you know take bumps, and they're crying." He was like. You took it and is like it didn't even phase you, man. And so I kind of got a little bit of respect there, a little bit from the boys. So I was like, "That's yeah. cool." So that I I love that I I love that. And one of the guys, one we were ribbing each other in the back one night uh, before a show. <laughs> one of the guys, uh, uh, Big Johnny Lopez. He's like, we we're talking about chops. He's like, you ever took a chop? I said, no. And so, <laughs> the guys got me. And he, he hauled off, chopped me across that chest. I was like, whoa. And he's like, that's what it like. And oh, man, it's just, yeah. I I was like, I know what a bump and a chop feels like now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ain't got a. I ain't got a lot of chest, so I try to stay away from them chops. <laughs> <laughs> Did you imagine Gunther chopping me? Oh, no. <laughs> that, that guy that i i gotta give props since you brought him up i gotta give that guy props man total transformation from a year ago dropping yeah, man. slimming down and just going at it man he's a workhorse he's definitely a workhorse and Some what monster. i like about him as a heel champion is he's like a fighting champion he'll He'll and he's been winning clean here too as a heel, which normally you don't see that a lot. I mean, the ring is sacred, bro. <laughs> like, like, 
He about that life. I, like, I love it, yo. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Every now yeah. and then, every now and then, his boys will interfere, though. But, like, for the most part, he's that, that, that triple threat finish, bro. I was like, yo, they made him look strong. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they definitely made him strong. I think he's going to hold on to that Intercontinental title for a long time, probably for another year. They, they want him to at least break a record. I, I hope so. I hope so. Like, like, please, let's let's keep that title relevant. Like, I miss that title being relevant. Like, I like I remember when the Honky Talk Man had that. Like, that belt was like the the V V belt next to. I mean, of course the you know the world, but mm -hmm. it had it had relevance. Mm -hmm. Do you believe? Do you believe the uh, the person makes the title, or the title makes the person? Person makes the title. Person makes the title. Person makes the title. Like. I mean, everybody's a smart mark now. Like for for all intents and par purposes, you know, a title is just a part of the story that's being told. Um, you want to tell a story because that's what gets people invested. That's just part of the story. So, you as a character have to make that mean something for the story like it's gotta it, it you you have to you as a character you have to show i'm this champion that's why this belt means something like it's, it's just something you got to do it, it's not the belt that makes you a champion it's it's you yeah yeah i i like it when when you see two people two people fighting over a title i like that because yeah, I agree. It it tells a good story because the one that wants the title needs the title because they they have to have that and the one who has it needs to protect it because they have a lot to prove that it's like you're just another person, you know, I'm going to go through, you know, defending this title, but I have this for a reason. I'm the best. Yeah. Yeah, it, it you know, it shows you're the best, yeah. And there's I, I like that. I, I especially like when you get the when you get the baby face chasing the title. I love that type of story, man. Because yes. it's with that moment when they finally get it. That moment that create that moment for the fans and is tangible. They they love it. Yeah. Yeah. The long term I, I like long term booking and long term term story because yeah at the end of the story it the payoff it it's good when you have the payoff there yes 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 that so like those are actually you know some of the things that i look for when i, I look for like promotions that i, I want to work at like cuz i like i want to perform in story like I, I want storylines. I want I want something you know I can give to the fans more than just you know a good performance in the ring. Like give them something that they can connect with, something they can be like, "Oh, that was great! I love that guy. He was so good." Or "Oh my god, I hate that guy. He's such an asshole." Like either or, whichever way. But like, that's why I do it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, when you get the fans in your hand and they're connecting with you and they're following everything that you do in the ring by telling a good story and they're following up with everything that's going on, the payoff at the end is just, is, is just amazing there. And I, I do like when, you know, the heel gets the one up the one week on or the one month on the, on the face and then, the next, <laughs> you know, goes back and forth and stuff. I love that. I love that type of type of storytelling because it draws it draws me in there. It's intriguing. Mm -hmm. It it does it does. There's one local promotion here next, to, not far from where I live here in Daytona, uh, Go Wrestle, and they got people that every month they've uh, bring out people, and there's people telling stories. And next month you want to see what's going to happen. 
you want to see what what's going to happen with the story and i i love that because it makes you want to come back and you want more and more of that you invest your time into that and just to see right. a good 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 you know good match and good story right right like that it's 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 a marriage like i i feel like you need both there, there has to be both you can't you can have a five star match, but if there's no story to it, there's there's no stakes on it. That like it's it's just a it's just a match. Mm-hmm. It is. You're 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 right there. You're right. I I feel like when like the psychol- psychology uh in the in ring psychology why are you doing that why a purpose for this why are you doing this why are you doing that and i there's some some workers and some matches i don't see a lot of that in nowadays and when I, when i do see that match that has that story i'm like it draws me in because i want more i want to right. i want want more out of that i want to see where where else we where else you taking me <laughs> right exactly like it should it should seem like a struggle like it's like this is a battle like like not only i mean yeah stories can revolve around the competition or, or whatever else but at the end of the day you step into the ring and you're doing battle to come out on top so there's got to be a story there's an ebb and a flow and there's Sometimes the good guy wins. Sometimes the bad guy wins. Whatever, however it, it, it goes, you you've got to find a way to tell it. That's that's what makes it art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, exactly. You got to find some way to get it across there. And I was I was telling you about when I was doing c- color commentary for um, Adrenaline Wrestling because I love being the hill commentary, just getting the you know get away with stuff just you know booing booing the booing the face and you know cheering for the heel and stuff and then they really come by commentary i'm like hey what's up and they just blow me off and i'm like oh. and you know oh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> so when they get in the ring when they go back and listen to that match all of a sudden it's like i I'm hoping the face kicks their butt now because you blew me off. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think, I think, I think commentary is like one of the more underestimated parts of wrestling. I like, honestly, I would like to see a lot more indie shows with good commentary because it helps with the story and yeah. like good commentary. Like really it, 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 I feel like it, it's, it's that seasoning or like you have a great match with a great story and you got the great commentary to season it up. That little, little, uh, ah, I feel it's necessary, man. I I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. When, when I listen to commentary now at some indie shows, it's like, it's like a, you don't you don't really get that heel commentary guy who's there just rooting for the bad guy. You don't. It's like they just it's just kind of mellow there. They're just you know, I know calling the action and telling that part of the story there. But you know you need you need to have that one guy in there who's just that person that's just like a Bobby the Brain or Rowdy Roddy Piper, which I draw from. You got to have oh, that. Heenan was Heenan. Hands down, one of the best heel commentary ever. Like I loved heel on commentary. He was all oh, that man was great. Mm-hmm. Still, my favorite. Still, my favorite uh, commentary from Heaton was uh, the barbershop incident. Michaels and Janetti there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Michaels threw Janetti through the through the window. Super kick demon in. <laughs> like, Wow, and it's bad too, cause like, like man, I was a I was a kid when I watched that, and like as a kid, like I knew Michaels and and Janetti were going to break up, cause they they had been hinting at it. They they were like they were beefing in matches and stuff like that. So then they mm-hmm. come on and, and talking to Barber, and I was like, "How's it gonna happen? How's it gonna happen?" And as soon as he kicked them. I was like, oh, let's go. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. man, that started the rise of Shawn Michaels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it did. It did. I still never forget Heaton Monsoon. It was like, look at that brain, Shawn Michaels. Uh, you believe what did happen there? And he was referring to Michaels throwing Janetti in the through the window. And, and Heaton's like, yeah, look at that coward Janetti jumping through the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was wild, bro. Oh man, wow. yeah. I was uh, I pulled a little bit of Bobby Heat in there when I was calling a match with Devin Nikay and Leroy Shogun out of Adrenaline. Uh, De- Decay was the face, Shogun was the heel. <clears throat> excuse me, and. He's he's like decay mentioned something. He's like, yeah, you you didn't remember my name when you had uh, uh, David Mercury on your uh, podcast. You forgot my name after night. You're going to re- remember my name. And I was like, all right, mental note. I'll remember that. So in that match there, I was just, you know, cheering for, you know, Leroy. I was like, get him, Leroy. I said, that's right. Pick that leg up, beat him with it. Yeah, I'll remember your name tonight, okay, after Leroy beat your ass with that. Well, after you, you know, your own leg. I remember that. And then, uh, like, I'm the, you know, this is my town. And I was like, I'm jumping up. I'm standing up. I'm clapping. I'm like, that's right, Leroy. This is your town. Kick his ass. <laughs> back and listen to that. He's like, what the hell? Man? <laughs> I mean, listen, you said I was going to remember your name. So I remembered your name. <laughs> yeah. 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 When Leroy beat you. <laughs> and, uh, Bro, <laughs> yeah, listen, was- getting your ass beat by somebody named Leroy is, is wild. <laughs> <laughs> great great match i mean it was yeah leroy went out there he did a great job devin decay went out there and did a great job but um yeah it's I just love this i i love i love just you know calling the action like that being heel you know just just doing that there i i like the tactics of the heel man when they you know they cheat and you know they distract the ref especially in tag oh, team man. Oh man, love that! <laughs> so, like, one of my favorite, one of my favorite things to do is, I mean, the the drag the eyes across the room. Yeah, I love that. Like, what ref? What? I, I got five. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love that. I love the dirty tactics of the heel man because I, I especially like when when you see a face and they do that heel turn. They like change everything up with their style and everything and stuff, and mm-hmm. I love that. And then sometimes you don't see that. It's like they just, you know, they talk they still trash. Wrestling the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking trash on the mic, okay? Yeah, that's you got that down. But now show show me, you know, how you changed, how this angle happened to where it made you turn on the fans. Why are you turning on the fans? I want to see stuff like that, you know? Make me believe it. And then, and then yeah. like if you really feeling like this, then I should see I, I should see some kind of translation of that in, in the ring. Like if you if you're supposed if you're like all talking shit and you the, the converse you should be there should be cowardly moments in the ring. Mm-hmm. Should be like <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Hide out the ring. Hide out the ropes. Flair was good at that when he was heel, man. He'd jump in mm-hmm. the knees. No, and just when in the ref get distracted, low blow. <laughs> low blow. Right to it. <laughs> Every time, bro. Everybody <laughs> fell for it. The dirtiest player in the game, man. Yep. <laughs> Especially the meal kick when he had the like when the ref wasn't looking and he just threw uh, lift the leg right up. <laughs> I Flair, love Flair was great, man. Oh man, his selling was, yeah, amazing. Mm-hmm. I I wish I could get to that level of overselling. Not yeah. that good at it, yet, but I'll get there. He's that man is magic in the ring. Hey, he is. He is. And did you see his last match he did with uh Jarrett and Lethal and uh, Andrade? So no. I I don't have cable. Oh. <laughs> um, but I, I saw clips of it and I'm like I'm like, bro, 
I much respect, man, because you like seventy five years old getting busted open the hard way. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be doing that at seventy five. <laughs> I hope I'm in the shape to be able to at least. Because yeah, oof. yeah, yeah. He it. We were taking me and my brothers were like, okay. How long, how many minutes is it going to take for Flair to, uh, you know, sh- juice and show some color there? You know, <laughs> and right. we're like, sitting there like, I think it was like 15, 20 minutes in, or like 10 <laughs> minutes. And it's like, there he goes. You know, so you've seen the hair turn Kool Aid red. It's like, mm, yep. There he goes. <laughs> Him and Hogan, man, whenever they was busted open, their hair was all, <laughs> like always, now it's a pink mask or, or depending on how bad it was. Full red, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah, it 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 was it was. Now, do you since we're talking about heels, do you you like do you prefer working face or heel? What what do you like? Um, so face comes a little harder to me. Um, but. I, I like being face. I, it, it's fun. Being face is fun. Um, hmm. I've never really thought about that. No. Heel. Heel. Definitely heel. heel. Definitely heel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get the. I get the. My interactions with fans when I'm heel are um, a lot more uh, visceral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it's, and it's all fun man like they 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 get into it get into the match we all have a good time yeah that's yeah i i've talked to a lot a lot of people they say yeah they like working heel when they work heel they like that because you know it's it's being a face you got to get people to like you and it's much more harder as a heel. It's just, you know, I, I, I do like those heel turns to face, you know, in, in mm-hmm. the right moment in the right setting, it has to be a reason. And then if I, if someone's who, who's been a heel for a long time and it's like, they're starting to get over with the fans. It's like, okay, you know, you got to turn, you got to turn him and you got to, you know, do it when, you know, strike when the iron's hot, because if not, you know, it's like you're gonna miss that opportunity. Yeah, and- you miss you miss the time for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Heels like it's just. I mean, the thing with with babies, like you, if you're baby, you really got to get that that sympathy. Like when when you're getting your ass beat, like you really got to connect with that crowd in pull them in to get them to want to see you, you know, come back. They want to see you get your comeuppance. Like, get, yeah, fight, 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 baby, fight. Like, that, like as a heel, you don't, you, you just really, like, you, you, you pretty much act like you don't care what the fans think. You, you just be like, the fans say something, you, shut up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't got to do much to get a reaction. It's, it's, it's great, especially when you get the grandmothers mad. If you the grandmothers at wrestling, I know you've probably seen that where they want to climb over that barricade and oh, get, get into. It. <laughs> so I, I forget who it was, but um, like one of the first shows that I, I worked. Uh, a guy told me, if you get the kids, you've got the crowd. So when I'm coming out as a heel, I look f- immediately for what kid I'm going to piss off. <laughs> <laughs> immediately. Like, like uh, yeah, you're going to be real bad at me today. And <laughs> Like I like I I will torment that child. I, <laughs> I I will I will take the baby right to that kid and choke the baby. Like yeah, this your hero, right? This year, like oh man, 
I'm, I'm, this is your fault. What's happening? All oh, your fault. You did this. Like it's um, uh, yeah, uh, it, it definitely heal more fun. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, it's definitely. <laughs> Talking about kids, I know MJF got a lot of heat. I mean, when does he not get heat? The the guy he he gets it, you know, and it's 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 amazing and. He threw that cup of water on that kid, and people were like, oh, you know, just he got heat on that. Well, I, I mentioned to someone, I said, I said, what about Ted DiBiase when he knocked the basketball out of that kid's hand? <laughs> <laughs> like, Forget about right, that. So right? <laughs> there were a lot of people that had something to say about what MJF did. I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was. Bro, <laughs> it was great. I'm sorry. Like, he's you're as a heel. That's what you're supposed to do. Like, think think about it. Think about it. That kid just had a moment. Now, of course, yes, he's gonna hate MJF for life. But <laughs> that kid got to go backstage. That kid got to be be cheered up by some of his favorite stars on that roster. That kid has a memory for life. That kid is going to grow up saying, yeah, you know, this one time, you know, this wrestler MJF, that pussy, he threw water on me. Like, like that's going to be a story that he can tell from now on. That's what you should be doing it for. Like, I can't, un like, yeah, there are things that cross the line. I don't think that was one. That was, that was good heel shit. <laughs> good heel shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was it was good because yeah the same thing happened to the kid uh ted dibiase did and they they brought him backstage and ted talked to him and uh he cheered he cheered him up there was a picture a while back ago uh dibiase i think put up or someone that was close to dibiase put it up i think it was on twitter or instagram and it showed it showed dibiase and the kid and then like years later he the kid ran into dibiase again they took a picture together <laughs> i thought it was pretty cool you know <laughs> see and you know what dibiase should have did he should have had a ball and had the kid knock the ball and they filmed it and like <laughs> like that would have been a whole book see like Things like that, though, but like, yeah, that's it, it's stuff like that, which is why I wrestle. Yeah, it's entertainment, man. You you put on a show for you put on a show for the kids and just people and just you know they they cheer you, boo you, you know that's what they that's what they do. And Fans will never lie to you about you know what they think about you. It's nah. <laughs> There's one there's one area in the uh, in this in the country uh I think it's uh I think it's uh, Kentucky kayfabe mm. still alive there because when um oh I forget his name um good friend of mine I was friends with uh JJ McGuire he co-wrote a lot of the uh, wrestling theme songs back in the 80s with Jimmy Hart okay uh, he they did a show for this promotion there and uh, uh Tracy Smothers, okay, turn heel. And as soon as he turned heel, the crowd got into it and they are yelling. It's like, he's like, hey, just screwed him. But they're come on, come on, the barricade. <laughs> just like, <laughs> oh, that's wild. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is. Kayfabe still is still alive in Kentucky, man, because they, they were like, as soon as Tracy turned on JJ and his guys, they're like, he just screwed him. They're trying to come over to the barricade. Security's trying to put him back. Like, no. I mean, they were wanting to tear him up, you know? Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> it is. It is. I still think one of the one of the like greatest um moments in wrestling was Andy Kaufman. He 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 got that there. And I mean, he like for K Fabe, that right there is like the like from Savage Cream of Cream of the Crop right there for Cream of the Crop. <laughs> Always rises to the top. The top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Still, <Ooh. hey. laughs> Sad, Still, listen, listen. 
Yeah. Which is my guy. Yeah. Savage. I mean, yeah. He um still still to this day, the highest the mo one of the greatest moments in TV history is still from the David Letterman when uh Jerry Lawler smacked the shit out of Andy Kaufman. It's wow. still top ten 100 greatest moments on television. Letterman, man, you I laugh at his expressions. He didn't know what the hell was going on. Jerry Yo, he and- was <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna tell you exactly what was going through David's head at that moment. He was like, "Yo, just smack the shit out of like a lot. This is this is on air. What about how do I? What do I ask? <laughs> like, bro, like he rocked him too. I was like, yeah." Yeah, and he told him, told him, you know, he's because he's like Jerry told told Andy, he's like, we apologize. This is it. This the, the feud's over. There's no you know continuing it. And and that's when Andy's like, yeah, smack me. He's like, Pow! <laughs> just <laughs> I I still like the fact that when he got pal drive. You know, by the king there, he wore a neck brace around, and he Brr. was. <laughs> I'm gonna sue. You violated me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that, that's that's good shit. <laughs> good stuff, man. Oh. Hey, if you, I met um, a few years ago. I met Jim Cornette, and mm. talked to him. And one of the things I walked away from talking to Cornette was back in the day, he said that people said, yo, you're stealing stuff. You're stealing stuff from me. He said, stealing stuff happens all the time in wrestling. And Cornette said, it's like if you take something from here or you take something from there and here and you put it together, it's not stealing. It's research. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm using it for research purposes and that's the greatest that's one of the things I walked away when I talked to him you know in the, the time I got to talk to him when I got to meet him but I, I walked away with that right there it's like of course other wrestlers I mean how many times have people used ever, anyone's everyone's moves you know like Billy Gunn said it best you know I asked him when I met him at that uh, same I, I like, can't hear you give me one second i think my earbuds may have died Uh oh okay oh, wait there you are you're back i'm back okay all right cool billy, billy gunn said i asked him about the famous sir from Dolph ziggler i said right. uh, feel about Dolph ziggler using your famous sir and he said how i feel about it he says i'm flattered but he's like we're not reinventing the wheel here how many look how many times people have used moves you know, it's like like they're using moves now that were finishers into transition moves like DDT and you know stuff like that. Right. And he's he was like he's like you, you know he is like everyone uses a move. You know, no one's stealing anything. I know back in the back in the day, it's like you wouldn't use like someone's finisher like Harley Race. Right. You wouldn't use his yeah. finisher. He'd come after you. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, like, yeah, like, there's, there's only so much you can do as far as making like a unique move. Um, I don't know. I think, I think my finisher is pretty unique. I haven't seen anybody do it. I, I hope it stays that way. Um, I want to be the only one doing it because I mean, I think it's pretty cool. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, it is, is it like wrestling has been around for a really long time there's 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 only so many ways you can slam a person yeah 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 and it's just you know you you got to put your own touch on that you know exactly separate from the rest and it that's that's all you gotta all you gotta do there and pretty much um like when i was watching uh when I was watching a match with uh, Daniel Alexan- Alexander, Jin Pro Wrestling, um, I know we talked a little bit about it, you know, before we started recording here tonight, and uh, I'm gonna have to go back on our YouTube channel there and uh, check check that out. Um, besides wrestling for Jin Pro Wrestling, what other promotions have have you or you wrestle for? 
Um, so I wrestle for Pro Wrestling R. Um, I wrestle for uh, Kaiju Pro Wrestling. Um, we are one, of course, um, and recently Chosen Pro Wrestling. So, yes. um, and Chosen, for those who don't know, um, new company just starting up. We're having our first show, Inception, April 15th. Um, it's at the uh, Bayville Elks Lodge, uh, Bayville, New Jersey. Come out if you're close in the area. It's going to be a great show. A um, lot of great talent. Um, they recently had a uh, tryout, uh, the free for all event. Um, and they picked a. Yeah, yeah, Inception. Yeah, they picked um, 10 guys. Uh, they're the quote unquote chosen ones. Um, and a couple other people also made the roster too. Um, so we're all going to fight it out for the top spot. Um, and it, it, it was a great experience though. The, the camp was, was, the trial was great. Um, shout out to all those who made it. Um, I was a little disappointed when I didn't. It's okay. I still made the roster. You know, I, I got to be in, in the, the showcase match later that night on Titan. <laughs> you can see that on Titan. TV. Just saying. Um, but yeah, you, you guys that got that top spot, just know I'm coming. It's nothing personal. It's nothing personal at all. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Y'all rock. But I want y'all spot. Just say it. <laughs> nice. Now, I had PJ on uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, a couple, About a couple weeks ago, I had PJ Savage on. Um, he's d- deeply involved with Chosen Pro Wrestling. He's pretty yes. much what he said when he was on the podcast here he said he's running behind the scenes there and he he pretty much summed up that chosen pro wrestling is like nxt to what titan titan cha- uh championship wrestling is which i yes. think is amazing because having people as yourself being a part of it from what i've already seen already from watching that one match which i'm going to be checking out more with you i'm I, I like what I see I see because knowing you're on there, I definitely want to see more talent that's that's gonna be a part of that there. And that's you know, that's gonna break out there. And how since we're talking about Mr. Savage here, PJ Savage, I know he was supposed to jump in here with us tonight. Um I don't know what happened, but um <laughs> PJ man working, man, man working. <laughs> <laughs> working last time he was cutting promos so he may be cutting some promos getting you know working you know you know doing that but i mean i i i love everything what pj pj does in wrestling uh, i've been watching his matches for quite some time now and over over a year now i've got to see what he's done with himself in wrestling and just i i love everything about it and when he talked about chosen starting this up i was just like wow this is good this is gonna be great man we need more wrestling with someone with his mindset and how he thinks and how you're just talking with you tonight man this is this is uh i'm gonna say it again this is cream of the crop right here (laughs) i love it always rises to the top oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> beside beside yourself being a part of cho- uh chosen pro, uh pro wrestling what um who who should who else should people look out be a lookout for that's a part of this um as far as like, like as part of a uh, part of chosen or just in general um part of chosen that's that's gonna be part of chosen who who should people um, look out to besides yourself so uh, there's there's one guy uh, that uh, was actually in a, a, a fatal four way with him um, on Facebook Live for Chosen uh, Kamikaze. Um, he he says he's explosive, yeah, and in, in the ring he really is. Um, he's somebody you want to keep your eye on. Uh, you can see him; he's got the headband. He's down in the corner. Um, 
Uh, Michael Fain uh, is another guy. Um, he's a star in the making. Like you, you can just see it; it's, it's written on him. Um, it's 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 the the whole roster is stacked, man. Like realistically, like you, you could come out to see everybody. Uh, like we got guys. Like you got the tag team up right there, um, bro. Those guys, all of those can go in the ring. You actually even have a monster, uh, monster factory student in there, and uh, Oliver. So, like, it, it, I, I can't say enough about these guys, man. It, it, it's going to be a great show. If you're in the area, come out. If you're not in the area, but you know you're looking for something to do on a Saturday afternoon, take the trip and come out, man. You, you're not going to regret it. These two guys right here, yeah. El Trabador and and Joe Clean, man, I, I I I hate to see them going against each other, man. Like I feel like I feel like they should be working together to make every facility a better place. I mean, we got the maintenance man and we got Joe Clean, man. Like these guys, it, it hurts my heart to see them fighting, but they gonna fight. <laughs> so, they gonna fight. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, these four guys right here. Yeah, yeah there's Kamikaze. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm coming right. for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, John Rambo's another one. He's a he's he's a mo- like all four of those guys really are are monsters in the ring. Man. It's, it's gonna be a hot one. That might be match of the night. I don't know. I'm 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 picking it though. I'm picking it match of the night. Match of the night, okay? You heard it right here, ladies and gentlemen, on the Everett Lee Show. Just saying, match of the night right here. This fatal four-way right here. <laughs> it's my pick. It's my pick. We'll see what happens, though. Man. It's a lot of competition. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It it looks... It look Card looks good. I mean, card looks good, and it's... This it's gonna be amazing, man. This is this is definitely gonna be amazing. I'd love to see this live. I love going to a new promotion that's just starting out, and just be there. It's like I was at their first show. You know, it's like you'll never forget that. It's history in the making. Also, uh, for those who can't make it live, I do believe it will be on MobFi TV. So okay. you know, if you download the app, it's free. Um, You'll be able to watch it there. There's also a, a documentary that is being shot. Um, so you can be able to watch the documentary there and all of Titans matches and shows there too. Nice. Nice. Uh, PJ gave me that app and I have got it installed on my fire stick and i am just been busy and uh especially this weekend i'm gonna get around i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna go back and watch some titan you know re- championship wrestling a sh- lot of shows in there good shows man good shows <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna definitely get to check it out one one thing i noticed behind you i see a title hanging behind you there yes sir yes sir yeah what what title is that you have in your position so- I am currently the We Are One Omega champion. Um, we actually have a show on April 30th where I will be celebrating one year as champ. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long year. Got some. Got Like I said, I was telling you part two of Daniel Alexander. He's one of my defenses. Oh, man. That's that's going to be that's going to be amazing. <laughs> I I love it, man. I definitely love it. I'm excited for uh I'm excited for Chosen. I, I definitely am. I'm I excited wait. and I can't wait for it to come on there where Titan Championship Wrestling is so I can actually watch it and I'll be like, Yeah, this is gonna be great. <laughs> because I told PJ, I was like, dude, I'm like, I'm seeing you know, I see matches, you know, depend it pops up as like here or there of you with matches and nothing it's like i it's like i want to see like a full titan show and right like oh here let me give you the app and he sent it to me and he's like you download it and i was like yeah i'm i'm in man this is, this is <laughs> I'm, I'm glad because i asked my friend david c wrestle and who i 
got to meet PJ through because I've known David for so long. And I told David, I'm like, there's one guy I want to interview. This was last year. And he said, who's that? I said, PJ Savage. He's like, oh man, I had him on. Hey, yeah. Uh, it just, it went from there and stuff. And I told David, I'm like, where can I watch Titan, man? I was like, IWTV don't have them on there. They have in vicious, but I want to see Titan. And he's like, uh, I think it's on their Facebook and just, I didn't see anything. I, I see all the promotion advertising, but right. when I talked to PJ a, lot, a few weeks ago, I'm like, dude, <laughs> where can I see Titan at? And he gave me that app there. He sent me the link to download. I'm like, yes, this is about time. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually a pretty cool little app too. Like, you know, I, I, I'd recommend it. I mean, at the very least to watch Titan and, and chosen just saying. Yeah. Then um, you can, if uh, Titan has a live event on there, you can actually watch it on there too, live, right? Or is it just recorded? That I don't know. Um, okay. And and I don't want to give out any f- information that I don't, don't want to say yes or no to it. I, like, I'll just leave it at, I don't know. Okay. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine. And since we're, since we're talking about promotions and stuff, uh, if you want to, again run by let listeners and viewers know where they could see more of you at uh events and uh, like what else do you have going on later this year too um pro wrestling r uh we are one um we are one will be running shows throughout the years as will uh pro wrestling r uh smash master um gts um, I think that's it from now, but you know, I'm always updating my schedule. Um, easiest way, uh, you, to, to find out, just follow me on Twitter at just saying DG one. Okay. Okay. And you're pretty, you're pretty, uh, you're pretty, you pretty much are on social media, especially on your Twitter on there, just letting people know what's going on, updating yeah like i i mean i do tweet random things occasionally i'm a victim of social media yes but um any events that i i have where i'm going to be at i i definitely post them on my twitter okay yeah i was looking on your facebook page here man you you pretty much yeah you got a lot of stuff that you like <laughs> just going through your feed here and yeah it's just you you promote that's that's great you're promoting just wrestling events just a lot of stuff on here i love i love what i'm seeing man that's that's Trying good to unite indie wrestling man like just doing what i can to make indie wrestling better that's that's great that's great and i one one question uh i'm gonna ask you before we uh take it home here um like bookings and stuff do you do you tra- travel outside of uh philly there like like the for any bookings depending on what it is so and like in general i'm i'm booked in jersey north and south um i have traveled to connecticut um and i'm not against traveling for bookings i listen somebody in Texas wants a match with me, I'll be there. Somebody in California wants a match with me, I'll be there. Someone in Colorado wants a match with me, I'll be there. Okay. Nice. I I love that. I love that. That is that is awesome, man. This is this has been great. This has definitely been great talking with you, getting to, you know, to talk about wrestling, talking about the promotions, talking about how you, you know, what inspired you and how you got into wrestling. I, I love this conversation, man. I can't wait to have you back again on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, man. It was, this was a lot of fun and yeah, I would love to come back. Oh, no problem, man. This is, this has been great. This has definitely been great. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in, listening to this audio portion of this podcast, which you can find every show on all audio podcast platforms and watching it the video version right here on the Everett Lee YouTube channel and that's it ladies and gentlemen thank you 
for tuning in, downloading, listening, and watching this episode of the Everett Lee Show. Everett Lee signing off. Everyone have a good day, good week, and we'll see you next time for another new episode of the Everett Lee Show. Peace. Follow The Everett Lee Show on the following social media platforms. Facebook, The Everett Lee Show. Twitter, at The Everett Lower Score Lee. Instagram, Everett Lee. Subscribe, follow, The Everett Lee Show, on the following platforms. Anchor.fm backslash, Everett Lee Show. YouTube, Everett Lee. And, Johnner's Podcast Network, WrestlingWithJohnners.com.